First of all, I did want to say that I've been looking forward to this interview for quite some time. And I thank you so much for sitting down with us. No problem. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for allowing us to sit down. Um, with you. The first thing I wanted to mention is the fact that you guys, I saw on your um, Facebook page and all of your stuff that you have a big blues influence. Yes. Including one of my all-time favorites, Robert Johnson. Yes. What is your influence with that? Uh, when, when I was kind of trying to find the, the sound and all that other stuff, I was really, really inspired by just that old blues from the 40s. I do a lot of... Uh, I have a huge playlist of all of that stuff that I just listen to for, for inspiration and it's it, it's just grit and soul that I don't think a lot of people have tapped into in today's kind of music. So we wanted to take all these great old blues motifs and just constantly update them and, and make it so that younger people can listen to them and enjoy them. Okay. Um, I always say, and I was going to see if you agree, isn't that really the heart, the root of rock and roll anyway? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can, you can hear blues tropes throughout <laughs> all of music. Obviously Led Zeppelin, they don't make a yeah. thing of it, but yeah. I think a lot of the young kids missed that somehow. Exactly, and, and, and when, <laughs> when we kind of keep that in mind, and now it's just developed to whenever I'm playing guitar or something, that's just kind of what naturally comes out, so now it's just part of the voice, but yeah. it's that soul, that vibe, that, that feeling that there's something deep going on is, is so cool that, that I think a lot of people are, have missed, and it, it would be great for people to go back. Um, when you listen to someone, a more modern contemporary like uh, uh, R.L. Burnside, who did almost like a blues punk thing towards later in his life, it's really raw and it's really energetic and I wanted to try to capture kind of those, the, the, the old feel of blues and once again just update it to whatever modern music is or whatever that's called. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, it's, it's always changing, so. So, um, maybe maybe going from what you just said, but uh, what do you think makes your band stand out from all the local bands that, that are around? Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy. Well, he, he, he had to pick us out of a litter, so let's see what let's see what it, his answer is. I think for me, like what drew me to the band, because I'm, I'm new, uh, was just the, like, like you were saying, like I, I the, the formula for the music is not new, but the way the band was presenting it felt new to me, felt fresh. Um, and I love blues, I love not all that, but all those genres, but what attracted me to, to the band was the freshness of it. It just seemed fresh to me, you know. We've all heard blues, we've all heard rock. For some reason, this band kind of spun it in a way where it's bluesy, it's heavy, it's mellow. And I think what impressed me the most was not only the music itself, but um, that acoustic, uh, the last acoustic, that sold me on it. It wasn't the heavy riff in the guitar, it was the fact that this band could break it down, right. you know, small, like that. And I was really impressed by that. So I was like, if this band can play heavy, and then it sound good, and then break it down this small, it just sound really, really good. I'm looking forward to that too, because yeah. I've not heard that yet. Yeah, that was I know you guys do it a lot, but I haven't been able to make it. So. Oh, well, <laughs> glad you're here. <laughs> um, I've noticed through your Facebook, um, especially Twitter and whatever you interact with your fans, you guys really seem to keep it real, which oh, yeah. cracks me up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> makes me blush sometimes. But, um, how important do you think it is to be like that, to stay connected to your fans? Uh, well, I, I think it's, it's the most important thing. Uh, there's something more important if you really want to do it, if you really want people to come to the show. You have to be transparent. You have to be full transparent. You know, I mean, the, the cliche of rock of uh, mystique is there, but for us, I mean, we're just regular guys, and we want to hang out with people. We, want, we don't really want people to take us seriously, we don't take ourselves seriously. We take the music seriously. Right. But, you know, we definitely want to be transparent so that there's no layers. People don't feel like, oh, they have to get through layers to get to us. Right. You know, it's You're like, approachable. No, we have a direct line to us. All, all the time. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what's most important is to be accessible to with your fans and people that are Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So um, you mentioned that you're new, but the band has been together three years? Yeah, about yeah. Okay. How would you say that your band has grown or evolved or what do you want to talk about? It's when we first started 
um, you know, our first show was winning that play contest. So we we were kind of playing catch up from the moment we started because we entered a seven minute song, didn't expect to win, and just kind of thought we'll find five people who will like us and then we'll get a good start. Right. Well, it turned out going way better than we thought and ultimately, and I, I remember saying specifically, worst case scenario, we win. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> So we've been trying to play catch up throughout the years and I feel like now we're we're on top of it and more importantly musically I feel like now we've kind of found our voice and, and, and who we are as musicians and what we try to write and and just present ourselves where before it felt like we found something and we were trying to still refine it and mine it and see exactly mm -hmm. where it was and how does it do this and now I feel like we've, we've firmly grasped that sound and that idea um, and, and that, that just ties with and, and that, that ties with, with fans talking to us and what, what they like and what we can deliver on up for them and you know we, we try to make sure there's the open line of communication um, when you go to the tool shed there's a paragraph that basically says, you know, this band is as much ours as it is everybody else's. So we want to deliver what that message is through our voice, the way that we know how to do it. And so, you know, it's, it's just been this long process of trying to figure out who we are as, as not only people and musicians, but what does Whiskey Six mean or represent? And I feel like now we've gotten a hold of that. I do too. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, which, um, for each of you, which is your favorite song to perform when you do live shows? Left to right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I really like um, the stuff that was already written before I got there. Um, of course, I, I, I'm in love with the stuff that we're writing now. Um, there's a new song called Long Next, which I think is my favorite right now. Yeah. Um, that we'll be releasing soon on our website. <laughs> It'll be free. But, uh, yeah, but we, uh, that, that's probably my favorite song. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's either long necks and open legs or uh, love, sex, and American excess. That's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. Those are they're just they're just fun, throw caution to the wind rock songs that are just it's it's just fun to play. We don't need to think about it that much. Mm -hmm. It's just let's just go up there and jam this song and we'll be done. <laughs> so. How about you? And for me. Uh, it's probably a song we don't do quite enough. Uh, we haven't brought it up or anything. The Winter Killing Blues. Yeah. It's just, it's got such a free form to it. I mean, the song doesn't actually have anything written to it. It's all just yeah. vocal cues and yeah. what we're feeling at the time. It really, I don't know, it really has a symbiosis in the band for that song. That's, that's really the yeah, that's coming back. Yeah. You gotta bring it back. So um, we talked about your blues influences. What other, what other like rock and roll or musical influences do you have? Um, for me, uh, a lot of people call me a music snob, but because I've listened to a lot of stuff. Um, honestly, lately I've been listening to a lot of Motown, uh, and especially like um, there's this modern soul movement that I'm starting to really uh, listen to and, and, and kind of feel out. And I'm, I'm, uh, Bruno Mars does a couple of those songs. Uh, there's so many great things that are coming out. So I, I and especially a lot of modern music. And, and um, on the other side of the token, I'm really inspired by like Queens of the Stone Age and Josh Homme and, and them for the cultures and everything that he touches. Like it's it's he, he delivers his music in such a sarcastic, I don't give a fuck attitude that's just so unique to them. It's it's punk rock, but it's in a Stoner esque voice, I guess. Mike, what's your influence? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a, um, I've been funny you say that because I've been listening to a lot of James Brown. Movies. I'm rediscovering James Brown. I'm falling in love with him again. Um, so a lot of soul stuff. Um, I, I'm a big uh, hip hop head too. I love hip hop um, and I love metal. My favorite. Two bands when I was growing up was Molly Crew and Run DMC. Yeah, you know, it was like, those were my two favorite yeah. bands of all time, I think. So it's a balance between that and then everything kind of derived off of that from you know, yeah. metal. I got into blues and hip hop. I got into soul. So it's kind of like that. It's the core of me. Cool. 
anything well, specific? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Actually, <laughs> got into it, but uh, he got me hooked on Queen of the Stone Age actually, and it really opened my eyes to just how they do music. You yeah. Know? And I really dig it. Just the attitude, the swagger to it. You know. Mm -hmm. I have um, more of a serious question uh, regarding. We keep losing venues. What do you think that that is happening? Yes. <laughs> How do I deliver this in a way that won't get me in trouble? Um, yeah. You, you know, on, I, I, okay. Uh, in all honesty, it's a supply and demand. I think. The supply of music and bands and everything like that has now overly exceeded demand to where there was a build. You had the, the big build in the 80s where all of a sudden it, you know, it was possible to be in a band and you could go every night and see a cool band. But there was all these bands playing full, like three, four sets a night. Right. So you had to be really, really comparable and, and understand what you do. now. It is flipped to where the demand has incredibly shrunk, <laughs> and the supply of bands everybody For wants to be women. in a band and yes. evil. people and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I absolutely, I, I think that's incredible. However, from a fan perspective and stuff, you can get worn out pretty easy. So I, I, I just think that that is just a supply and demand issue. Yeah. It's really do. Okay. Um, is there anything you guys would like to add? Anything at all? Want to do a cartwheel? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what we don't get a chance to do a lot is to say thank you to everybody. Yeah. Because um, I mean, we try to really express how grateful we are for everybody that tunes into us. It's like, like what she's saying, I mean, there's so many bands out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, especially you know, the internet now. I mean, we love the internet. The internet is the number one channel that we use. Yeah. You know, back in the day, it was flyer and telephone. Yeah, they got that. You know, it's, like now it's posts on Facebook, which is great because you can reach a lot of people. Right? I think just to say thank you to all the people that check us out, um, come to shows, uh, support us. That's that's really what it's all about. Really, uh, what keeps bands going? People coming out, what they're doing, or just you know, just music. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, continuing that, saying thank you and, and, and giving back in, in any sense we can with, um, you know, with the tool shed. We're, we're now doing, uh, through our Facebook, we're doing use stream practices where people can request songs, they can do whatever they want, cool. you know. So we want we want to deliver something back to all the people who have supported us over the years and, and really held it out and, and really helped us go through the tough times. I mean, the, the, thing, the thing that's been interesting for us is, you know, we've had to develop in front of people. Mm -hmm. Where most of the time, you can kind of sort all that out over a couple years, and then you can deliver everything in one fail swoop, and we just didn't have that option. <laughs> so, thanking everybody that, that stuck it out, that, that helped us, that that really wanted to support us, and that, that I agree, yeah. We, we don't get the opportunity to say thank you enough, and I think, definitely thank you. Um, yes. Okay, when I was, uh, say I was 11 years old, and I'm a uh -huh. bit older than any of you guys are, but my, my uh, albums that I had in my collection and the, and the ones I listened to most, I probably had Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, um, you know, 10 years after, and, you know, that, as in that kind of genre, what? When you were 11 years old, what would probably be the, the three the three things that you would have listened to at that age? We'll go, yeah, rap. Oh uh, shit. For me, I probably have to say I found uh, a Beach Boys album when I was way little. It's that in sync. Hold a minute. It came up, alright. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Elvis, actually, I didn't know what I was listening to at the time, but I mean, like, it was okay. I didn't really like it, but I mean, I listened to it and didn't have, yep. like, too much music when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was... I, that was about the time I started going to my HD teenage years. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, I was, like, obsessed with Aerosmith. And then... I started getting my angsty teenage years of Metallica and Megadeth and then Creator 
And then that just divulged into my love of death metal. That's just one of the layers of just other things I listen to. But yeah, I, Megadeth was a big inspiration. Metallica, Aerosmith really got me started performing just in general. So. Uh, for me, like I said, you know, this is a convention of glam metal to the 80s and the big tracks. I started playing just because the drum kits were so fun and big and huge. Oh, yeah. I loved it. You know, I just love that whole, like, over the top edge of that kind of music. Behind. So it was definitely, like, through. I'd say, like, acts like Public Enemy, and the Assassin's Creed. It's so here, my hands, like, here, and I'm like, stuff. You're like, the way I love it. I was gonna say Easy E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, it's like those two genres. It's where it's a deep, it's where they just attract me to the, the look of it, the sound of it, and just the tangibility of it. Probably. Tangibility. Tangibility. I don't even think that's that a word, but... Uh, it is you know now. What? You know what? If people believe we're smart, it's man. It's yeah. 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 <laughs> You guys had a successful tour last summer. Yeah. Is there another in the works? I'm trying. Yeah. It's a money thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's just a matter of uh, we we want to literally be everywhere possible, and uh, it, it's just a matter of funds and whether we can afford it at, at the time. Right. We're gonna do a quick run with the Razor. Razor, yeah. Yeah. Mexico and Texas. It's just going to be a couple days. Yeah. Um, it'll be good to get out and, you know, play out of town and eat some fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things like that. So we're kind of taking baby steps. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. Keep the beat going. Support local music. Yeah. <laughs> That's <you>. right. <laughs>